Hey, says, brother, I know it's haram. I know it's far, but I can't do it. I know it's haram, but I can't stop. I still do it. I still choose to follow shaitan. I still choose to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam describes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on judgment day when all this world will be destroyed. On that day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be angry, he was never as angry before and he will never be as angry after. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day will fold the heavens and the earth. And he will say, he will call, Ana al-Malik, I am the king. Ain al mutakabbirun Where are the arrogant people? Speak up. Someone speak up. For whom? Who's the king today? No one answers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers. Lillahi Rabbil Alameen. Are, we, are you really ready to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, Sorry, I didn't know. We knew. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa came to us. The Quran is there, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there. The lifestyle you're living, you are basically playing with fire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the human beings the ability to think. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He honored us over the rest of, the rest of His creation by this great ability to think, to understand, to comprehend, to be fair, to weigh things properly. All the worldly things, mashallah, the uh, humanity, the civilization has excelled, reached the unprecedented, you know, levels of technology and control <coughs> over the earth. And unfortunately, the issue of us and God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has, has been on the decline. Nowadays, everything is very, very material. Nowadays, it's very, very hard to feel spiritual. It's very, very hard to understand, you know, the relationship between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A sincere person, a person that's honest with himself, it takes him just a couple of minutes to look around him and realize how far we are from thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us. How far we are from understanding the gifts Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. How unfair we are in the way we deal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his deen and his orders and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's advice and his sunnas. This human being is very, very strange when it comes to this field. His understanding, his improvement in this field is, 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 is very, very strange. When you look into it, see, see, look at us. Let's be honest with ourselves. How do we deal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How do you deal with the orders of Allah? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says something is haram, this is forbidden. How do we react? How is 90% of the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nowadays reacting? People that have guidance. People whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose. People whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon by sending to them the best man that ever stepped on earth, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at us and let's be honest with ourselves. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the book of Allah make things very, very, very clear. This book, my brothers, is amazing. It was the miracle sent with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every verse in it has wisdom. If a person really wants to know, any verse in the Quran is enough to blow him away. To make him really understand the reality of this life, the reality of the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But unfortunately, <coughs> there's locks on the hearts. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described. Afala yatadabbaroon al-Qur'an. Don't they ponder? Don't they ponder over the words, these words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, over the book of Allah? Afala yatadabbaroon al-Qur'an? Am ala qulubin aqfaluha? Or is there, are there locks on the hearts? Ask yourself. Is your heart locked? When you read the book of Allah, do you really understand 
what is being said to you? Do you really understand the message that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and his companions and the followers pass to us? Sometimes when, when you sit with yourself and you look at the condition of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa you reach a clear conclusion. Clearly we don't understand. There is something wrong. The reception is not working properly. There is something wrong in the way we deal with deen, with our religion. Sometimes I personally feel like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining things so clear as a mother or a father explains to his little kid. Sometimes when I read the book of Allah, I say, Subhanallah, how clear is the message? Why are we, are, are we finding it so hard to understand and implement our deen? Why are we still choosing to follow the path of shaitan, the path of the devil? Very, very important question and very, very unanswered. I find no answer. I find no excuse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, see, see, uh, see this arrogance we have. Sorry to say, I'll be, I'll be a bit, you know, yeah, I'll be honest with you. I'm speaking to myself and to everyone here. I'm not attacking anyone. I'm not, you know, <coughs> making anyone lose hope in Allah. I just want to open our, us to open our hearts and, 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 you know, really read between the lines. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, has a time come before when this human being was nothing? Where, what, what's our origin? Where do we come from? We were nothing. We did not exist. You had no existence. Your race had no existence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. Khalaqana, Allah created you. We have created this human being from a nutfa, a drop of sperm. This is our origin. This is where we came from, to test him. Then we gave him hearing and we gave him the sight. Now we can see, now we can listen, now we can understand. But what is our origin? Nothing. We have our origin is a drop of sperm. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks in another ayah. Has this human being seen that we have, we have created him from a drop of sperm? And for some strange reason, this human being, instead of being grateful to his Lord, he turns around and starts disputing. We dispute Allah's power. We dispute Allah's borders. We dispute Allah's rules. Allah's law that he puts on this earth, we can arrogantly. This human being says, brother, I know it's haram. I know it's fard, but I can't do it. I know it's haram, but I can't stop. I still do it. I still choose to follow shaitan. I still choose to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The question I want us to understand today is where did this arrogance come from? On what basis are we, are we living such a lifestyle? This lifestyle of negligence, disobedience, away from the orders of Allah. On what basis? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala controls the heavens and the earths, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is in absolute power, absolute control of the universe, and still, for some reason, we don't care. How can a person be so unfair with his Lord, whom, whom Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us, my brother's gifts, everything, everything from your hair to your toenails, health, wealth, heavens, Earth, mountain, mountains, rivers, seas, air, everything is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are living, we are, we are drowning in Allah's gifts. We take it with our right hand, accept it for granted. And with our left hand we sin. We accept the gifts from Allah and still disobey Him. Extremely unfair creation. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks, Oh, you human being, what's, this, what's your story? Why, why have you been cheated so much? Why have you been fooled so much? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you, perfected you. Perfection in terms of creation. All this from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yet, we find that in ourselves the courage, the arrogance to disobey, to choose the path of shaitan. My brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he created Adam alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the angels to bow to Adam alayhi salam, to prostrate to Adam alayhi salam. And Iblis refused. You created him from teen, from mud. I am from fire, and fire is better than mud, higher than mud. So he refused. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throws him 
out of the Jannah. Iblis takes an oath. Oh Allah, because of this misguidance, this path that I've chose to disobey you, because of what happened, because of Adam, I promise, I promise, I will sit for them, I will, I will wait for them on your sirat, on your straight path. What do we say in Fatiha every day? Guide us to the straight path. Who is waiting for us there? I will wait for them on your straight path. I will come, I will attack. I will come from the right, from the left, from the front, from behind them. And I promise you, you will find the majority of them ungrateful. I promise you, I will show you that these creatures are ungrateful. This was the promise of Iblis. Allah said, leave Jannah, expelled, humiliated. Allah then made a promise. Anyone who follows you of them, I promise you, I will fill Jahannam with you and them. This is their abode. This is the result. The story, I think, needs no explanation. We are here to be tested. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling us to the path of Ar-Rahman and Iblis is holding us to his path. Now which, which path are we choosing? Are we choosing the path of gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Of obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Of being thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or have we chosen the path of Iblis? Ungratefulness. My brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of our ibadah. Don't think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is waiting for your rahmah, for your mercy, for your charity of salah or obedience. La wallahi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more great. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater than you can imagine. Open your eyes and see. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is saying that there is no space of four fingers in all this vast skies that you see except there is an angel laying his forehead prostrating to Allah. Rasulullah saying, Wallahi, by Allah, if only you knew what I know. You will laugh little. كَثِيرًا And you will cry a lot. The Sahaba, upon hearing the words of Rasulullah they had open hearts. They started sobbing. Affected the hearts. Allah, my brothers, is higher than what you know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater than what you think. You are taking a risk that's uncalculated. If you are on sin, if you choose to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are choosing the wrong choice. You are basically in disobedience with your Lord. And this is too much of a risk. You might die. Why do we choose to kick the ni'mah of Allah, to refuse the ni'mah of Allah, the gifts of Allah, deny them? How can you live without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Impossible. All human beings, when it comes to the crunch, when in the hard situation, what do they do? No matter what religion you're in, atheist, Buddhist, Hindu, whatever, idol worshipper, science worshipper, money worshipper, when the problem comes, where do we go? To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your heart, the nature of human beings. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Quran? When you're on the sea, when you're on the plane, see on the airplane, and a bit of turbulence comes, what happens? Uh, your heart starts pounding. People start getting out the Mus'haf. People start reading, you know, any zikr, the pain might fall. What's happening? Allah is saying this in the Quran, 1400 years ago. وَإِذَا مَسَّكُمُ الضُّرُّ فِي الْبَحْرِ When you are in the sea, in the ship, and then some harm, some calamity befalls you, a bit of wind, a storm. Everyone forgets everything. Only Allah remains. Then you only ask Allah. I promise you, Allah, save me, Allah. If only this problem, ya Allah. If you save me from this problem, Ya Allah, never again, never sin, pious Muslim, on the track, obedient. And then when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lifts this calamity, khalas, you back to your negligence, back to your arrogance. Verily, this human being is ungrateful. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks the question, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that sent the storm, can't he destroy the land under you? You come to the shore, well, now I'm safe. I can walk properly, alhamdulillah, I jump off the plane, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Now I'm eh? I'm strong again. Allah is asking, Allah can destroy the land under you. Or send a tornado, 
with stones in it. Or are you secure from, a, from another chance when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take you back to sea? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send a stronger wind that will verily drown you. Where are your brains? Allah is asking, who saves you from the darkness of the sea and the land? You beg of him, you plead of him. Any problem you're in, pleading, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, it's only this time. By Allah, if you save me this time, I'll be from the grateful. I will thank you, Ya Allah. I will show you, Ya Allah. Every one of us, I am sure, once in your life, you passed by this test. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only saved you from this, He saved you from this and other situations. And still, you choose not to be thankful to Allah, to thank others, other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look how we show them our signs. Maybe they will comprehend. Maybe they will choose the right path. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us, this Quran is for us. It's not only for the kuffar. This message was sent for human beings. But our hearts are like the Quran says. Our hearts, unfortunately, are covered. They are covered with sin. Every time you make a sin, every time you choose disobedience of Allah, your heart gets a black spot on it, a black dot. And our hearts have been covered with sin. That's why we are deprived from the mercy and the rahmah of this book, from the shifa, from the healing of this Quran. We read the book of Allah. It's not to me. The words are not, are not addressing me. If we have hearts, if we understand who we are dealing with, my brothers will be like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? Look at his life. He used to pray all night, tahajjud, to the extent that his feet would swell and crack. Aisha radiallahu anha sees Rasulullah in this condition. She feels sorry for him. Why are you going so hard in yourself? What's the answer of Muhammad sallallahu Shouldn't I wish, shouldn't I want to be a thankful slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Something I owe Allah, Allah given me all this. Shouldn't I wish to be a thankful slave of Allah? Shouldn't I wish to prove shaitan wrong, iblis wrong? You will find most of them ungrateful. No, human beings should be grateful to Allah for all that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. So before you sin, before you choose to disobey Allah, before you choose to keep the lifestyle you have at the moment, think, be wise. Play it right, as they say. Take the right, make the right deal. Why refuse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Why choose dunya over akhirah? It's not the choice of the smart. It will be destroyed, that's the promise of Allah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Allah described, Oh, you prefer this world. Unfortunately, you still prefer this world. Although the hereafter is better and more lasting. When are we going to believe the promises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The way you act is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is after. Your actions are the indicator of Iman. That your actions are the, are the sign that you have this belief in your heart. When you have this belief in your heart, it shows on you. Salah, prayer, zakah, fasting, charity, closeness to Allah, dhikr, refraining from sin, following the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa these are the signs of iman. If you find your life empty from these things, then know that your iman is in trouble. There's something wrong. There's something wrong with your heart. And if there is something wrong in your heart, you are in trouble. And when I say trouble, I don't mean worldly trouble. Worldly trouble is nothing. It's of, it's of no comparison to one problem on the day of judgment. On that day, no money, no kids will help you. Except for the person who, who meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a clean heart. If you find yourself still inclined to live in this world, still in love of this world, to the extent that it takes you away from your Lord, it takes you away from being thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then know that there's a disease in your heart. And if you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this disease, you are in trouble. This means, my brothers, that we need to work. And when I say work, I don't mean, inshallah, next year, next Ramadan, next Hajj, like we've tried before and we, we fell on our faces again. It's an order. All you who believe, repent. Repent to Allah, a sincere, clean repentance from all previous sins. A complete change of your life is what we're after. 
For you to change your life, you can't, you can't hang up with the same friends. You can't live the same lifestyle. You need to, you need to be in the, in the environment of the mosque. Change your company, change your friends, and choose the path of Rahman. Choose the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will never lose. You choose the path of shaitan, shaitan, 100% you will lose. Read the book of Allah, you will find it very, very clear. For some reason, we are still, you know, shaitan has tricked us, and we're still living. Weeks, months, years have gone without solid change on the right path. For this, my brothers, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to guide us all to a straight path. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika shadu an la ilaha illa an. Astaghfirullah.